Well, I thought it was time that I gave you a proper update on the gazing ball because I'm up to the next stage. I've completed most of the roses and I've gone up to the top centre of the ball there, as you can see with those roses there, the spiral part. I've added the roses and also some extra leaves which will finish that off. Now, this is the next stage. I'm actually going around to the bottom area. Now, where that area is down there with all that colour is going to be underneath the gazing ball. So you actually probably won't see the majority of that. So what I'm going to do now is actually, as you can see here, here I've got some thin set on the top of the rose here that I've been doing, some on the white area here, and uh, certainly a little bit over on this side here, and I just need to clean that up a little bit. So, and here, I actually made a, put a branch up here, this branch here was going to be, or this stem here was going to be up here, but this was going to be too close to these flowers up here. So I've actually dropped it a little bit because when I did the actual spiral drawing, the gazing ball was actually uh, on the bottom. Uh, th this area was on the bottom and I couldn't actually see where I was going uh, properly. So I knew I'd probably have to make a few alterations as I go. And I like my mosaics to be uh, quite fluid. I don't want them to be too formulated. I want them to be a little bit fluid. So I think I'm working towards that quite well actually, keeping everything quite fluid. Uh, so I'm going to just show you uh, on how I'm doing this. But first, I'm going to clean these roses. So I'm just going to put the camera down and then uh, get everything ready and then we'll continue on. Now this thin set here is going to be quite easy to take off. This has been on for a couple of days and uh, it's going to be very easy to take off because it's not caked on the top. I wouldn't want to leave thin set on the top of these flowers if it was really caked on. So all I'm going to do is get a bit of a rag and I have shown you this before and just use a tool and just rub it. If you try and get the top of the tessera clean, if you, if you happen to get some thin set on it and the thin set is still soft, you're just going to make a huge problem for yourself because it is just going to push down into the thin set, into the bed of thin set, and it's going to squish up at the sides again. So you can take it off a day or a couple of days later if you've only got a little bit on the petals. But certainly if it's caked on, then you need to remove that before it's actually fully cured. Well, I'm up to this area here and I took out a little piece of glass that was here because it was too close to this rose so that when I wanted to reduce the size of the branch down, it, it was going to look quite odd. It was a little bit too close. So I took this piece out, but I am going to take out another piece. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that. And then what I'll do is I'll, this has got a lovely curve to it, this piece of glass. So I'm going to use this curve and from this width, narrow it down, similar to the other side, but it will look different. And so I'm going to take this piece out. Now I'm going to be using protective eyewear because I don't want this piece to just spring up at me. And if it does that, then I'm actually using protective eyewear. Now I'm using this tool. It's the only tool I have, but it'll work quite well. It's actually uh, to be used with bricks and nails and things like that. And I've got this very small display hammer. And I'm just going to put it underneath there. I'm going to work it away from me and certainly not back towards this way because I don't want to damage any other part of the mosaic. So a few taps should do it, but we'll see how we go. There you go. It's off. I'll remove my safety glasses and I am going to have to clean up this area here. The thin set, I'm gonna to have to scrape that off, but that won't be really difficult. I might soak it in a bit of water first and then uh, you know, gradually work it away because this is a little bit raised here. And I'm just going to draw a line now. I'm trying to not to get my hand or fingers in the way of the camera. And I'm going to start at this end and just gradually reduce the branch down in its thickness, but following the curve. I may take it down a bit more actually. I think that's about it. And then put a line there where I'm going to cut it off at the end and that looks pretty good to me I think. Now when you're looking at a piece of glass always have a look at the other side because we get so caught up in what we're doing for the moment that uh, we tend to grab a piece of glass that looks right on one side but it could actually look better on the other side but in this particular case I've chosen the right side. So just a little tip because we do get caught up in what we're doing. Now what I'm going to do now is just score this and break it 
and in the meantime I will remove this uh, thin set off here and I just analyzed the thin set on the back of this glass tile that I removed and it's actually really stuck very well to the glass which is what it's meant to do but it's actually stuck very well to the actual peltier as because it's actually removed some of the surface of the peltier so I'm really happy about that now let's see how this looks that looks pretty good I'm quite happy with that I like the curve on it, suits the rest of the branch, and I need to now cut the end off it. And my marks were pretty well spot on, but I didn't want to cut it off yet until I could see a little bit more of where I was actually cutting. So I'm just going to nip that bit off. And just, that's it. bit more just very tiny little shards those ones that's better now I'm just going to now put some cuts across here so it can sit flat because obviously that's not sitting flat so I'm just going to put those score marks in now Okay, I've done that. Now, one other thing I just want to mention is when you're doing something like this with branches and you're choosing your glass, make sure that the design of the glass or the pattern of the glass is going the right way. What I don't want to do is have uh, the actual design here in the glass going running up and then other parts running across this way. I'm looking for a nice flow. So it looks like the bark on the actual branch is all going the same way. Just something uh, worth noting, I've, cut, I've scored this, so I'm just going to break these, keeping them in their right design. And then I've got my thin set all mixed up here. Just don't want them to roll off. And I'm going to adhere this down. Okay, there's the first piece, blobby squish. Another piece. And I'm looking for complete coverage of the actual base of the glass. And I've got a little bit of thin set there. Don't worry about that because that will come off the next day. And when I'm applying the thin set to the back, if it's a large, a reasonable size area, you can apply it direct to the substrate, but I like to also apply it to the tile if it's only a small area like this. When I'm putting it down, so as I don't get um, thin set squishing up between each of the tiles, I like to actually put this end in first and then squish it towards the end. And that helps stop it from squishing up between the grout lines, which just saves cleaning up and if I'm grouting this in black I really don't want white thin set coming up between the grout lines so there's another little tip now we're on to the next branch and I should have actually marked it where it's going to go I'm gonna to have to do a bit of guesswork on this but I'm pretty sure I know where it is going to be anyway I can always move it if it's not right okay here we go Looks pretty good. I'm a little bit messy, but that's okay. If it's only just a little bit here and there, it'll wipe off. So I'm not worried about that. See if I had a big blob on the actual surface. I'd want to get that off pretty quick. There you go. And I'm not too concerned about this being a little bit narrow here and wider there, and then it goes back to being narrow. You know, nature is not perfect in what it does, and it just adds a bit more interest to it. So it, you know, perfection is the killer of creativity. But I think that looks really quite good. So I'll continue on. I might put another little branch up there, but I don't want to add too many more branches. I just put this down and I realized I didn't put a cut in it and it wasn't sitting quite right. So I just took the thin set off and I've just cut it off. Also added a few notches in it too, just to add a bit more um, interest to it. <laughs>
I'm adhering things down, I like to put them close in. And that means that I don't have to worry about filling the little gaps in with some tessera. So I like to have the leaves close in and any small gaps like that can be filled with grout. I'm going to have to make more leaves too. I'm getting a bit low. I've cleaned it all and I'm up to adding more flowers, more roses to the gazing ball, but I can't add any more until I turn the gazing ball and I uh, usually get a hand on doing that. And actually the person that actually helps me uh, turned around to me the other week and said, and how's the glazing ball going? And his wife laughed and I laughed because uh, as you know, it's, it's a gazing ball, not a glazing ball. But as, uh, as his wife said, look, he's actually quite right because I'm actually adding glass to the outside of the gazing ball, so technically he's probably right, I am glazing it, but uh, definitely I will be calling it a gazing ball. So I need to turn the ball, then I can add more flowers. I also wanna give a shout out to everyone that has given me uh, quite a lot of compliments on creating this gazing ball. There's been so much interest in it, so I wanna say a big thank you to you. And I've had quite a number of people ask me, where did I get the glass from? And it came from a company called Access Glass, or most of it came from Access Glass. So I will put their website on the screen now so uh, you can also go and have a look. And also I'll put it in the description box of this video along with some other links as well. Well, I'll give you a bit of a tour right around the gazing ball now. And like I said earlier in the video, that's the actual bottom because of how the gazing ball has been turned. So we're going to have to use our imagination a little bit. And where these roses finish, I need to continue those down along that line there right down uh, but I've certainly got the majority of the roses on, but there's still quite a few that need to be added. But I'm really glad that the majority of those roses have been, uh, have been uh, added to the gazing ball. And I'm going to count how many roses when I'm finished, how many roses have been uh, applied to the gazing ball. It's going to be very interesting to see how many I've actually made. Now I'm heading around to the top of the gazing ball, and that's where the wisteria, I'm looking at adding a wisteria in the top part there, I'm not sure yet, but that's my train of thought at this point in time. So there you go. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope you've taken something away from it. If you saw value in the video, please share it, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, think about subscribing. And uh, if you have any comments about the gazing ball or you want to know anything, then drop a comment down in the bottom of the uh, YouTube section and I will see you in the next video. Enjoy. Enjoy.